Hola, mis magos. ¿Cómo están ustedes? Remember, that just means how are you doing today? You can answer by saying, bien, más o menos, mal. And remember, last week we learned another one. If you're a young lady, you would say, cansada, if you're feeling tired. And if you're a young gentleman, you would say, cansado, if you're feeling tired. So go ahead and show me. You can use your hands and you can say the words to tell me how you feel. ¿Cómo están ustedes? Gracias. Yo estoy muy bien. I'm doing really well. I'm super excited because we get to learn a little bit more about color today and how different colors work together. So let's go ahead and talk about what we need for our supplies. First, you always need your pencil and your sketchbook. Remember, that's an artist's warm up. Now, for your sketchbook this time, I have a little prompt for you. So what I want you to do for your sketchbook is remember, no more than five minutes on this, write your date, and then remember to sign it when you're done. But what I want you to do is to draw something other than a pot of gold at the end of a rainbow. So what is gonna be at the end of your rainbow? Now remember, only spend five minutes doing this. And you can use color if you want. If it takes you about 10 minutes, that's okay. So that is your art warm up. Then the supplies that we're going to need for our project this week is if you can get, you're still going to need a pencil and you're still, you'll need a piece of paper. You can put it right in your sketchbook if you want, just on a brand new page, nice and big. If you have a little tiny sketchbook like Senora Weight, you want to get one that's a little bit bigger, or a piece of paper that's bigger. So you'll need a pencil, and then if you have watercolors, that is great. If you do not have any watercolors, then some kind of color that you can add. So you can use crayons, markers, anything like that. Make sure you're laying something down on the table and having a parent or guardian help you if you're working with watercolors or if you're working with marker. You want to make sure you're protecting the surface that's underneath and the color's not bleeding through. So if you don't have watercolor, that's okay. In about two weeks, if you could get some watercolors, just the little, you know, rectangular ones. I found these at Michael's. They're really big, but a lot of times they're just the ones from Crayola that are in the little rectangle. So if you could get those in the next couple of weeks, we're going to have a project that pulls all our design elements together. And then we're going to use watercolor. If you don't have it, that's okay. Colored pencil, marker, crayon will work just fine. Um, but the watercolor helps you blend colors a little better. So we talked about the color wheel really briefly and we talked about warm colors and cool colors. There are also primary colors which are the only true colors. All other colors are just mixes of these three. So there's red, yellow, and blue. Those are our primary colors. Secondary colors, you mix two colors together to get the secondary colors. So if you mix red and yellow, which secondary color do you think you'll get? That's right, orange. Now, if you mix yellow and blue together, which secondary color are you going to get? That's right, green. We have a joke um, in our house, especially because my brother is a big U of M fan. We say, well, you take yellow and blue and you put them together and you get green anyway. Go green. It's for all those Spartan fans out there. All right. And then if you mix blue and red together, the last one is purple. 
So those are our secondary colors because they're the ones that come by mixing the primary together. So they're second. There's also complementary colors that are located directly across from each other on the color wheel. So orange and blue, orange and blue. That's in your weight's favorite complementary color combination. I really don't know why, I just really like it. But green and red is another combination, complementary colors. And then yellow and purple. If you're a Laker fan, that's another complementary colors. So a lot of times, you know, complementary colors are used for sports teams because they stand out really well and they, they complement each other. That's why they're called complementary. And then the last set of colors are intermediate colors and they're by mixing a primary and a secondary color together. There's also pure light, which is white, and then black, which is the absence of light. Because really what color is, is just light reflecting off um, something. We see what's reflected. So the grass is green. All the colors are coming down through the sun, but green is the only one that comes back to our eyes. It's really cool science. So before we get into what we're going to work on, I have a video or a song that teaches us, teaches us the colors in Spanish. Los colores, the colors, los colores. Red es rojo, red es rojo, blue es azul, blue es azul, yellow es amarillo, yellow es amarillo, verde green, verde green, black es negro, black es negro, blanco es white, blanco es white. Purple es morado, purple es morado, brown café, brown café. Pink es rosa, pink es rosa, gris es gray, gris es gray. Anaranjado es orange, anaranjado es orange. Shout hooray, hooray, shout hooray, hooray. So I hope you liked the song. I thought it was pretty cool. So for our project, what we're going to do is something called Hot Dog and Cool Cat. If you have older siblings, they might have done something like this already. Um, and we talked about warm and cool colors. Remember, warm colors are things that make you feel warm, like oranges and reds um, and any all the colors in between. And cool colors are colors that make you feel kind of cool, like looking at a lake. A lake is blue. The grass is usually nice and cool to the touch, and it's green. Purple is also a cool color. So those are the colors we're going to use for our cat and our dog. So on your piece of paper, you're going to draw your cat and your dog if you have markers, or you can still draw them if you don't. Um, and then you're just gonna paint. If you have your watercolors, you're gonna stick with the cool colors for the cat. So blue, green, purple, okay? That, that'll be the colors for your cat. You can paint it like this one right here kind of like just in the shape of the cat and then draw with a marker when it's done. Or you can do like this one over here and draw the cat out and then paint the cat in the cool colors and then cut it out when it's dry. For the dog, you're going to need red, yellow, and oranges for your dog. So I have a nice little hot dog right here the yellow hat and brown because brown is kind of more of a warm color and then I have my two cool cats so then we got a nice blue one and a purple one and those are nice cool colors so you're gonna draw your cat cool cat hot dog 
and then add your cool colors to your cat and hot colors to your hot dog. And then when you're done, if you want to outline and marker, that always makes everything pop. There's also a seesaw activity with colors that I want you to complete before you do your hot dog and cool cat. And it just helps you um, sort the colors out a little bit and learn a little bit more about the color wheel. All right, Miss Mangos, that's it for this week. Remember to take a picture of your hot dog and cool cat using the photo button in Seesaw and submit it to me right here. If you want to share your sketchbook, you can also scare your, share your sketchbook um, with something other than a pot of gold at the rainbow. Um, you can share that with me too. You just have to take another picture. All right, next week we're going to be getting into, make sure for you real quick. Yep, beginning next week. So I said in two weeks, two weeks we'll be done with it. So starting next week, if you have watercolor, that would be great, but you won't need it in, for another two weeks. Um, we're going to pull all of these design elements that we've learned together into one bigger project. So adios for now.